It is undeniable that Blender has evolved a lot in the recent years, particularly after the release of the iconic Blender 2.8 release. So we're gonna be comparing it to some of the biggest software in the industry. And today I'm talking about Substance Painter, a leader in the field of 3D texturing and texture painting. What's important to be aware of is that these two pieces of software are fundamentally different. Blender, as many of you already know, is an all-in-one package that you can get for free. This means that it functions as a general toolbox. Think of it as a Swiss Army knife, which is designed to cover every aspect of the 3D creation pipeline. This includes key areas like modeling, sculpting, animation, rendering, and of course texturing and texture painting. Now, when it comes to Substance Painter, the situation is quite different. You see, it is exclusively a texture painting software, but not just any texture painting program. It is an undisputed leader in the field, because it was tested and proven in many big projects, and professionals rely on it on their job, which makes it the go-to solution for creating and manipulating textures and materials, whether it be for VFX productions, video game development, or anything else in between. It was originally developed by Algorithmic, but Substance Painter quickly rose to prominence to become a well-known software for its unique features, to the point where it even got the attention of the industry giant Adobe, which acquired it back in 2019 due to its ability to produce exceptionally detailed and realistic textures, as well as more artistic and stylized surfaces. It also introduced the ability to paint directly on the 3D models, which was very unusual at the time, I mean the early 2010s, and its support of physically based rendering workflows, which means it can generate textures that respond realistically to various lighting conditions, with the help of things like roughness, normal maps, ambient occlusion, and so on. Now the question is, to what extent can Blender be compared to Substance Painter and is it able to do as good of a job? And this is exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. Before we continue, what if I ask you how powerful you want a machine to be to render your projects? If the answer is yes, then you are in luck. iRender is a cloud rendering service that provides ultimate rendering horsepower and then some at your fingertips. If you are fed up with your slow machine, or you are on a tight deadline or a budget, iRender has got you covered. It is compatible with all major 3D software, and unlike other services, iRender uses the infrastructure as a service model, which means you have powerful physical machines that you can control remotely. They also give you options with pre-installed Cinema 4D and Redshift as a partner of Maxon. It also offers the best high-end hardware NVIDIA GeForce RTX 1490 and 3090 GPUs, and you can choose between single GPU and multi-GPU servers, making it possible to use 1, 2, 4, 6, or 8 GPUs for rendering. And on top of all of that, you can keep track of rendering, make changes, and see rendered frames in real time. If you want to know more about iRender, and try it for free right now, you can follow the link in the description down below. From a user interface standpoint, the main difference between these two tools boils down to how dramatically different the philosophies behind their interface designs are. Substance Painter, in line with our earlier discussion, has a user interface which is designed and optimized to make the texture painting experience as efficient and as enjoyable as it could be. Its interface resembles Photoshop's interface to a certain extent, with a layer-based system that allows you to stack multiple texture layers on top of each other. For example, imagine having a hard surface asset and adding dust in one layer and rust in another, which enables you to easily edit the different parts separately. It also includes various blend modes to merge the different layers, as well as masking techniques to either paint in or hide away parts of the layers. In addition to an arsenal of tools specifically created for 3D painting, such as brushes, generators, and effects, which we will talk about later in the video. As for Blender, well, things are a bit more complicated to say the least. First of all, we can break this down into two main sections. First, a texture painting workspace where we could directly paint on the 3D models, but even with just a glance, I think it is easy to tell 
that this workspace is limited compared to Substance Painter, since it is a more specialized software. So, the primary method of creating textures in Blender is through its node-based approach, which we can access through the shader editor. But what exactly are nodes? And how does this approach work? And this is what we will explore in the next section. So, node-based texturing is a technique that is used to generate textures, patterns, or surface details like scratches and dirt by connecting together small boxes, which are called nodes, to build what we refer to as node trees. The idea behind them is that these nodes are based on mathematical algorithms, and we can achieve a lot of things by combining them. For example, a noise node can create a random pattern that can be adjusted, and a bump node can add a 3D look to it. By linking these nodes, we can make a texture that looks like rock surfaces. But this is just a simple example, because a node tree can get incredibly complex, involving a lot of advanced mathematics to achieve more detailed results. As for the texture painting mode of Blender, the idea behind it is really simple, and it is painting or erasing textures directly onto the surface of the 3D model. We can use the basic round brushes that come with the program, or you can use custom brushes that you can use as a basis to mix image textures or no trees together. For example, painting some scratches, or to paint colors manually, or to create hand-painted effects. As for Substance Painter, it is the same idea as the texture painting of Blender, but with being much more advanced, since it is very specialized. We have the PBR-based workflow that involves manually painting the 3D models with the use of images, and with procedural textures which are generated algorithmically. Now, you might say they sound the same, and this is somewhat true. But in terms of which one is better, and while both options can achieve similar results, I still have to give Substance Painter the advantage over Blender, and I will explain why. From what I can see, the main advantage of Substance Painter over Blender is how simple everything is. To understand this further, let us divide this section into two parts. First, what makes Substance better, and then we can debunk the fundamental issues of Blender. So, one of the reasons that makes Substance Painter better is its layer-based workflow, which we already talked about, which is a simpler way to work with each effect being a different layer. Rather than having a confusing node tree, for some people of course, because some of us really like nodes. And speaking of that, Substance Painter's procedural texturing is much more efficient. This is because it is built on a solid foundation that Blender currently lacks, unless you are using an add-on or something like that. First we have Smart Materials, which are pre-made textures that can be applied to 3D models where they can instantly give them stylized or realistic looks without having to manually create any details. They also include settings to adjust and tweak almost every single aspect of the smart texture or the smart material to produce something unique every time. And let's not forget about generators and smart masks, which work in conjunction with smart materials, and they are used to procedurally generate textures that are established on mathematical algorithms, and they are based on the likes of curvature and occlusion maps. To be honest, without caring much about the boring details, you can think of it as a way for the textures to automatically adapt to the shape of the 3D model. For example, areas with more shadows would have more dust, but this is not everything, as it has an impressive collection of generators that we can enjoy such as rust, edgeware, and so on, which could be all adjusted to your liking. For example, the amount of how big the effect is. As a side note, Substance Painter also comes with a vast library of features that can be further extended with community assets, such as a lot of smart materials, brushes, filters, particle-based brushes, and much more. The manual brush painting is also much more intuitive and easier to keep track of, in addition to way superior texture baking and exporting capabilities, whereas in Blender, it can be confusing with many more steps, which often results in a lot of errors or bad texture maps. Now, in terms of Blender's fundamental texturing issues, beyond what we have already discussed, achieving comparable results can be considerably more challenging. We can take, for example, the use of smart materials like a metal with rust in Substance Painter. In Blender, you would have to conduct a node tree while trying to figure out the mathematical operations in your head. 
or having to manually paint it with the use of tools that can be described as lackluster at best. Essentially, it needs more thinking and patience to achieve results that may not be as good usually, compared to Substance Painter. The calculations involved in these node trees are also more hardware intensive, potentially leading to further issues. So, while the texture painting experience might be a little bit harder in Blender compared to Substance Painter, I think the active community of Blender makes up for it a bit, with a lot of procedural textures that are offered and uploaded almost on a daily basis, along with great add-ons to further enhance the workflow, in addition to a lot of free learning materials that could help you understand the software better and the ideas behind nodes. In contrast, Substance Painter has a smaller community, especially at the hobbyist level, but at the professional level, it is industry standard, which means tens of thousands of people are using it already to work on professional projects. However, I find the software simpler to get comfortable with, as it doesn't offer a lot of complicated tools, but at the end of the day, I think both perform really well and can achieve great things regardless. So I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.